Skywatch Media News for October the 24th, 2019. Back in early July of this year, a series of major earthquakes hit near the California desert town of Ridgecrest. As a result of these back-to-back -back earthquakes, multiple cracks and fissures developed in the Mojave Desert, which were very large and impressive. These deep fissures show the power of nature, and for those living in or near the epicenter of the seismic movement, it is very terrifying. It's a worrisome sign that demonstrates the power of these July quakes, having been felt all the way from L.A. to Las Vegas. If this wasn't troubling enough, there are new worries on the minds of California geologists. A major California fault line has begun shifting for the first time in its recorded history, triggered by the series of July earthquakes and aftershocks. In the short time frame between the Ridgecrest earthquakes and now, the Garlock fault line, which had previously been dormant, has slipped more than an inch at its surface as a result of thousands of smaller tremors and quakes. The fault is suddenly changing its behavior, and this could ultimately trigger another powerful earthquake. The most disturbing aspect of what's happening in California's Mojave Desert is the notion that scientists have no idea what all of this distressing news means in terms of the region's earthquake preparations. Seismologists who pieced together a before and after portrait of the Ridgecrest seismic event by means of satellite radar images discovered that these quakes were far more complex than the models of previous large seismic events. It appears that the domino-like sequence of fissures surrounding the events has placed a considerable strain on the Garlock Fault. The Ridgecrest quakes had accomplished something that all other earthquake models deemed to be unlikely. These events were able to break faults at right angles to one another, permanently jolting a huge block of earth to shift northwest, while the other side of the fault shifted to the southeast. The animated slides presented by the California Geological Survey are very unsettling, and they paint a clear picture of the power represented by the Ridgecrest earthquakes. It shows long scars 30 miles in length on the surface of the Mojave Desert that moved within just moments of the July 5th earthquake. The images show the scale and the permanency of the movement that was many feet in some places. Most startling are the images that show how the ground on one side of the fault moved between 3 and 13 feet from the other end of the fault. Without a doubt, these portrayals of power show the severity of the desert floor shattering during the summer of 2019. So why are the recent seismic events so troubling for scientists and so worrisome for residents of Southern California and the Mojave Desert? The 160-mile-long Garlic Fault, which lies on the northern edge of the desert, has never been known to produce a major earthquake, let alone a shift or a move in any manner, this according to modern historical records. But now the fault, which is capable of producing a magnitude 8 or higher earthquake, is on the move, and it is creating a bulge that is viewable from space. The creeping of the fault as a result of the Ridgecrest earthquakes, which are the strongest events to hit Southern California in more than two decades, has now destabilized the Mojave Desert region between California's greatest mountain range, the Sierra Nevadas, and its lowest point, which is Death Valley. This is significant because it puts to rest the one obvious earthquake myth that some people persistently use, 
that quakes, similar to the Ridgecrest tremors, are actually good because they make major quakes in the future less likely. In reality, the exact opposite is true. The numbers of tremors of different magnitudes almost always follow a simple progression. In mathematical terms, it will take a series of smaller magnitude quakes to produce a single major quake. Therefore, if there is a significant strain in the energy to be, to be released, it will happen with the larger quakes. This was the case with the 7.1 Ridgecrest earthquake that took place on July the 5th. Not only is the Garlock Fault moving in one section since July, but earthquake swarms are taking place in another section of the fault, with additional clusters elsewhere near Owens Lake and west of Death Valley. If the destabilization of this region should result in a major earthquake at some future date, it would affect a broad and significant region of California, including the San Fernando Valley and Bakersfield where some of our nation's most productive agricultural and oil regions are located. This would include important military installations such as Edwards Air Force Base and Fort Irwin National Training Center. The Garlock Fault is also crossed by two of Southern California's most important suppliers of water, the California and the LA Aqueducts. A major quake on the Garlock Fault could eventually destabilize the San Andreas, which could lead to the worst shaking that Southern California has felt since the year 1857, sending destructive tremors throughout L.A. and well beyond. Aerial high-resolution imagery has shown that the portion of the Garlock Fault that has begun to shift is about 20 miles long. The northern end of the fault is moving west-northwest, whereas the other end is moving east-southeast. In addition to the Garlock Fault, there are risks with other faults along the eastern California Shear Zone, which is one of the state's most significant seismic zones which is associated with Pacific and North American tectonic plate movement. Earthquakes usually occur at a depth of between 1 and 10 miles below the Earth's surface, but calculations indicate that the Garlock Fault shift may have occurred only hundreds of feet below the surface, which then begs the question as to whether the seismic energy involved in a creeping fault near the Earth's surface will advance or slow down any subsequent earthquakes in this vulnerable region of California. For those of you who may live in the Pacific Northwest or have friends and family residing in this part of the country, here is something that you should be aware of. It seems as though seismologists are becoming increasingly concerned about the lack of earthquake tracking technology offshore. Now, for all of the talk in recent years of the potential for a destructive earthquake hitting western Washington state and Oregon at virtually any time, it seems that officials are not as fully prepared as they would want you to believe. This is why scientists are submitting a proposal to add new hazard monitoring sensors below the ocean floor. A catastrophic earthquake of magnitude 8 or 9 is bound to happen, so it's imperative that sensors are placed in strategic fault locations so that signals can be registered in advance of a major earthquake. The giant fault line located offshore is under-monitored, and therefore scientists would like to acquire at least several new monitors off the coast of Oregon. Each of these would be drilled 1,000 feet below the sea floor. The proposal is going to take a lot of money and several years to complete. So whether it is actually too late in the making is completely uncertain. Irrespective of the timing, 
Having an early warning system in place when the big Cascadia event begins will hopefully provide the early warning that will be required in the event of a potential tsunami along the Pacific coastline. We live in a world of fear and anxiety. It keeps us focused on the past or worried about the future. By acknowledging our fears, we can relieve our anxiety. Our eyes can still see the beautiful sky, and our ears can still hear the voices of those we love and care about. Live each day as it was meant to be. Thanks for watching.